hi welcome to the broadcast this is the book of Daniel overview it's the precursor to the next book that we're going to read through so as with the other um, Bible book read throughs that I've done I'm I'm doing this introduction to Daniel to just kind of give a framework for our minds so that when we're reading through we can grasp you know the book better and have a better understanding of it it worked well with the book of Ezekiel that we just did that's a kind of a complicated book it really helped to have the overview beforehand um, so I'm going to exhort you if you're if you're reading through with me go to um, you know watch this one um, watch it more than once maybe but also go to YouTube and get the Bible project uh, it's called Daniel overview Daniel overview and they do a really great job um, overviewing the books of the Bible in a different way uh, really completely different than what that what I'm about to do let me show you they use look at this oh, wait, wait, wait 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 let me show you this is a giant book of posters look how big it is I love this thing and I got it from the Bible Project website um, you can go check out their materials there if you want to I'm not affiliated with them I just love them and um, I, they're doing a great job give them a donation while you're over there but um, they will take on the on the YouTube or you can find on their website too but um, Daniel overview Bible projects Daniel overview they draw this out in front of you and explain it while they're doing it this diagram of the book of Daniel and it's fun it's animated and they just do an amazing job it's entertaining um, not boring at all and that will also help give a framework or an outline while we're reading through because Daniel's um, not any simpler than Ezekiel was but it's very exciting I'm really looking forward to it I learned so much in the book of Ezekiel and I've been reading the Bible every year for almost I mean for over 30 years but I haven't learned it at that about Ezekiel like I did this time because I really concentrated on grasping instead of just reading through getting that overview ahead of time and really concentrating on grasping the concepts really helped me this time I've got a much better handle on it um, so I want to say something else about that um, yeah so anyway that was exciting I'm looking forward to getting into the book of Daniel so for this overview um, I've got my little little checklist here I'm using a set of resources that I have um, and if you've watched any other introductions it's the same ones I like to go through and they give we want to look at things like who what where and when right just and an outline um, the who let's see um, the who would be things like the author or the historical characters what would be like the contextual background or the type of literature it is is it one of the narratives is it poetry um, is it the letters what kind of what kind of format is the book in before we start reading it when is the time period and the timeline two different things right when did it take place but also what kind of an outline of the book what is the timeline of the book and maybe even where does it fit into the timeline of other events in history um, other rulers around the world what was going on around the world at that time right so when would be um, that's when who what when um, where the geographically where it is specifically where the events in the book are taking place sometimes there's multiple locations um, and this is just a brief overview of these things you can get very detailed with it um, for example Ezekiel opens up with him sitting at the side of the Kabar canal that's geographical right that's where why would be the themes or the purpose of the book um, key verses messianic references something significant or unique about that book itself okay so having these things having this general overview before we read is great because remember or if you're just joining me this broadcast is all about Bible reading not necessarily Bible study I don't do a lot of prep beforehand I did for this but and even that not a lot because what I'm trying to do is in my my aim is to get people excited about Bible reading and reading through their Bible over and over beginning to end not just pick and choosing scriptures but reading their Bible study yes separately but just to at least get yourself through the Bible over and over because the rewards are great and you can glean so much out of just reading and so it, it's kind of a read through uh, or talk through the Bible that I do because if I see something that gets my attention maybe a story of something that's happened with me related to that scripture or something I'm wondering about while I'm reading um, I'll bring it up and this is what I want you to do when you when you listen if you want to put comments in the in the comment section or email me or whatever engage the broadcast please feel free because that just makes it more fun right this is all about um, falling in love with the Bible and it, it just one of those things it gets better with age the more you do it the better it gets and it never gets old so let's get started 
um, this first resource that I'm going to read you a couple things from is Rose Publishing Bible Overview. It's backwards for me right now, but I think once it publishes, it's going to turn itself around. It did that last time. So this is page 125. Let me show you here. Get my little stickies off of it. Um, this book has a section for each book of the Bible. See how it says Daniel? So it says Daniel, life in exile. I'm just going to pull out a couple little things here. It says um, the prophecy of Daniel foretells events. Wait a minute. I need my double glasses for a couple things. Let's see if I can get them on. Just because it's dark in this corner and it's dark print. So I know it looks funny. So it says the prophecy of Daniel foretells events that occurred later. This is called predictive prophecy. Predictive prophecy abounds in the scriptures. For example, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel, the Babylonian king dreamed of a statue. Now listen, because this is a major part of Daniel. A statue with its head, chest, belly, and thighs. I'll show you that in a minute, what it looks like. And legs made with different metals. Each section represented a different kingdom that would rule over Israel. The four kingdoms were Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Now there's going to be more about that. Remember, we learned the Bible. It's like puzzle pieces and you put them together. So just pick those up, you know, like doing a jigsaw puzzle. Just pick them up. You know, maybe we're getting this, the edge pieces right now, right? So just set them there and they'll, they'll come into play later on. Um, this one says the purpose of the book of Daniel has, or I'm sorry, the purpose. The book of Daniel has two sections and two purposes. Now, some of these books repeat themselves and that's okay, or they give a little different twist on the same information. And because that's how we learn, right? And by the time I'm done, we'll have a good understanding, um, a good basic foundation for, for reading and studying Daniel. So it says two sections, two purposes. The first part is the book about the life of Daniel and his friends in Babylon and their events, their escapades and adventures. Um, the purpose of this section is to teach the exiled Israelites in Babylon how to live as God's people in a foreign hostile land. The second part of the book includes several visions and dreams that tell about the future world events. And that's even future from us, not just future from Daniel. Some of them are future. Well, they're all future from Daniel, but some are even future beyond us today. The purpose of this section is also to encourage God's people in times of suffering and persecution by reassuring them that history is under God's control. In fact, God will do wonders that will dwarf anything he had done before. <clears throat> so then it gives a little outline. Again, it says the first part, chapters 1 through 6, is Daniel and his friends. And the second part, chapters 7 through 12, is Daniel's vision. So there's only 12 chapters in this book, as opposed to Ezekiel that we just did, which had 48. Big difference. <clears throat> All right, a couple other tidbits from here. It says the date. Oh, wait, the author. The authorship of the book of Daniel has been much disputed. Traditionally, Daniel is regarded as the author, although some scholars have disagreed and brought up some historical issues. A careful analysis of the book, along with historical and archaeological discoveries, strongly suggests the traditional view is correct. <clears throat> Most of what we know about Daniel comes from this book. He was part of the first wave of the exiled people from Jerusalem who were deported to Babylon in 605. Now I've got to stop there. And I've been repeating this over and over because these are things I didn't know. And some of you may know this, but I didn't know this for years. I just didn't pick up on it and was never taught this in church or anywhere else. But, um, okay, the history of, of the people of Israel, the Israelites. They had judges. They wanted a king. God gave them Saul, David, and Solomon, three kings. Then the kingdom split in two. And um, there was the northern tribe of Israel and the southern tribe of Judah. Okay. The northern tribe was invaded. Um, and then later, I think it's a couple, two, three hundred years later, the southern tribe was invaded by Babylon three times. Okay. They came and got people and exiled them to Babylon. They came again brought them to Babylon. They came a third time and destroyed the temple and took more exiles out. So <clears throat> that was the final time. And that was Solomon's temple that they destroyed. Now, so it says um, he was part of the first wave of people. Uh, the, so the first um, invasion, the first siege was when Daniel was taken to Babylon in 605 BC. So think about that. 605 was 600 years 
BC, and then we're in 2020 now, so 2,600 years ago. This is 2,600 year old ancient manuscripts that we get to look into and see what they were doing way back then. Isn't that cool? And the older I get, the less long that time seems. You know, 100 years is nothing to me, so 26 of them, 2,600s, doesn't seem that long to me anymore like it used to be. And y'all, the future's not that far away either. It's not going to be that long till Jesus returns and some of the events depicted in this book actually happen and they could happen before our eyes so this is going to be an exciting book because it has apocalyptic events that go on <clears throat> so it says daniel was in that first wave he was a member of the ruling or religious class of jerusalem who were the first groups to be deported having arrived in babylon as a young man daniel and his friends were trained as court officials that's because they were educated because of god's blessing he rose quickly and became the third highest ruler in the kingdom. From the dates in the book, Daniel ministered from the first year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign to Cyrus's third reign. Um, the date, again, although impossible to peg a date, the writing of the book of Daniel probably took place sometime during Daniel's ministry. Now, this is the writing of the book. Um, between 605 to 535 BC. So that's something to know. Are we talking when we talk dates? Are we talking about the date it was written, the date the events in it happened? Um, See, so you, you got to kind of pay attention to that. All right, this gives a couple themes. Um, I don't know how much. Let's see. Yeah, it's just a couple more things from this book. But the themes were an active God. Um, it says that um, the book of Daniel reveals that God is not merely a passive Lord of heaven. He is the dynamic Lord of all and closely involved in the lives of people. Yes, he still is that way today. He's closely involved in our lives. If he's not closely involved in your life, you don't know what you're missing. Press in there. Ask God to show himself to you. It's true. It says, okay, the themes, an act of God, a saving and judging God. And we saw that in Ezekiel, the judgments that were coming and, and Jeremiah and Lamentations. But at the same time, this was God saving them. He was saving them from themselves in his great love and mercy shown over and over again. It wasn't just some big, mad, mean God. This was God's love toward them. Um, it says he was a sovereign God. God rules over history. And basically, yeah, he, he gets to be boss. And he told him, you need to change your ways. You need to repent. You're getting yourself in trouble. You're about to go over a cliff. And they refused. And many of them, some didn't. Um, God is breaking through in history and God and resurrection. So it says, though hinted at in other books, Psalms, Job, and Ezekiel, Daniel is the first to speak clearly about the hope of resurrection. So there's the Messiah in the Old Testament. You Jewish people out there, you precious Jews, the Messiah, well, you know he's there. But this is Jesus. He's in the Tanakh. He's in the history books. He's in the poetry. He's all throughout. Um, let's see if there's others. Um, here's one key verse. There's several, but this is the one I liked. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. And that depends on the choice we make now in this earth. Will we receive the free gift of salvation given by Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ? Now, oh, here's another really interesting tidbit. It says, this is a bilingual book. I never knew this, but it's partly hidden, uh, written in Hebrew and partly in Aramaic. It's called Imperial Aramaic because this was the language of much of the ancient Near East. The Babylonian Empire used it for official communications. I think that's so interesting. And then um, it's always nice to see where is Jesus. Um, some say, I'll show you this book in a minute, um, that he is found in every single book. And in this one it says he is uh, the phrase son of man is just the Hebrew way of saying human being, but the name takes on a special significance in Daniel, where it describes someone who rides on the clouds, is given an everlasting kingdom, and is worshiped. So let's get to our next resource. The next resource is um, this Rose Bible Charts, Maps, and Timelines. I think I got this at Walmart or some local store, y'all, but it is amazing. It's full of these big color charts and, and lists and explanations, and I absolutely love it. So, uh, da, da, da. so it has a little blurb about Daniel here, too, and it's actually in the who, what, why, when, where format. So it says, who, Daniel, what, prophecy, and apocalyptic. It's going to be exciting. Where, Babylon, 
when 605 to 535 BC, so I know I'm repeating, but we'll remember, right? 605 to 535 BC. Why? To convince the Jews, to convince the Jewish exiles that God is sovereign and to provide them with a vision of their future redemption. Um, I already told you the outline, so that's the end of that part. And now, um, this is just something I, I throw in for every, so far, every introduction I've done. And this, you don't have to see it perfectly, but it's a Bible bookshelf that gives a really good visual of how the books are laid out for anyone who's new and, you know, or, or just anyone who hasn't really grabbed it. It's got the Pentateuch right here, the first five books. And then right here you have the history books. Um, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, 1st, 2nd Kings. Over here are the poetry, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, and, and the other ones. Down here, you have the major and the minor prophets, and then all of the New Testament. So we're over here. No, I'm sorry, we're over here. We're in the last of the five major prophets, Daniel, and they are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. So isn't that a cool? I know there's a glare on it. Pentateuch, history books, poetry, major prophets, minor prophets, and then the New Testament. So I really like that. And you can see, if you Google that, you'll find other similar charts if you want to print one out for a study notebook or something. Um, or you can look this book up. Okay, now, um, I forgot to say something in the beginning. No, let me do this first. Here's the picture. This is part of Daniel's dream. So it's the picture of the statue that depicts the kingdoms. I know you can't see it real well, but see, he's got gold, silver, bronze, and then his feet are clay and stone. It depicts the four kingdoms. And we'll see more of that when we read through Daniel. Um, we'll see more about that, talk more about it. It's the reason why I wanted to point it out. Now I want to say something. I'm going to be making this correction for a few videos just to make sure. When I was reading through Ezekiel, I made a mistake. I assumed something that was wrong and I want to make the correction for in case anyone's been following me and 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 you didn't you know you're assuming what I said was right um, I reserve the right to make mistakes and be wrong y'all I don't claim to be an expert I'm just trying to learn but what happened was remember I told you a minute ago that Ezekiel uh, there were three invasions into Jerusalem and the last one they destroyed Jerusalem and, and the temple right well then at the end of Ezekiel he gets a vision of the, what I thought was the next temple because okay now you got to listen they they destroyed Solomon's temple in Ezekiel later on they built Herod's temple if I have this correct and I think it is Herod's temple which is the one Jesus moved and walked around in and said would be destroyed in 70 AD and it was I thought that when Ezekiel was getting this vision of the temple it was going to be for that one but something I read the other day said that it was actually the future temple okay that's going to be built um, in the future of our time right see so it Solomon's temple was destroyed in Ezekiel um, Herod's temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans and it has not been be rebuilt yet but it's going to be and apparently that's the temple that Ezekiel was referring to and I didn't know that so I was wrong and let me show you a picture of what they look like they're so cool Okay, and it's not a great view the way I have to show it to you, but it'll give you an idea. This one. Okay, that's picture of Solomon's temple. They weren't the same exactly. And this is Herod's temple. And you can go online and find uh, some virtual walkthroughs of them and some other neat things that will take you inside of them and let you see how they were designed. So I thought that was cool and worth showing you. Now, okay, you might have seen a little blip there. I had to pause it for a minute. Can you see my dog laying in the back? There's another one down here that you can't see. Petra and Aldi. Petra and Aldi. All right, now, um, this is a really neat book that I like a lot, and I always want to read something out of it when I do the introductions. It's the Complete Jewish Bible. But it's not just a Jewish Bible right at the entrance of each book it has a little blurb and it has some interesting things in it i need double glasses for this one too okay so it says 
Oh, it's interesting because it uses the um, transliteration, so I have to kind of interpret it as I'm reading. It says, God uses Asher, or Assyria, and Babel, or Babylon, as instruments of his judgment against the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. That's what I just explained, right? Um, respectively. It says, in 605 BCE, Nebuchadnezzar defeats the Egyptians, which allows the Babylonians to gain unprecedented military advantages in the region. In the same year, Nebuchadnezzar begins besieging Jerusalem. He takes Daniel and other members of the Jewish nobility, remember, they were nobles, captive during the campaign, and Daniel rises quickly to the position of prominence in the Babylonian Empire. He's still a slave but they put him to work up high. The second invasion comes, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute. Um, anyway, the, uh, the second invasion comes in 598 to 597 BCE, and Nebuchadnezzar takes 10,000 prisoners and treasures from the temple. So that time he just raided the temple, right? And, and I read that they had to go 800 miles. Probably a lot of them had to walk the entire way. Um, can you imagine? 2,500 years ago. No cars. No motorized skateboards. Um, so it says that was the second invasion. The prophet Ezekiel is taken captive in that deportation. So Daniel first wave, Ezekiel second. And then it says, um, da, 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 I lost my place. Oh, the third and final attack on Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, begins in 588 when the Babylonians besiege the city for 18 months. 18 months. They would surround it. And you couldn't get out. There's walls, and you couldn't. There was no food. It was horrific. People starved. Um, anyway, eventually they break through the city wall, burn the temple and the city, and carry off the remaining temple treasures and captives to Babylon. I'm sure the people were completely traumatized. Not that that's not traumatizing in itself, but they never thought God would let His temple fall. With the collapse of Jerusalem and the captivity of Judah. Many Jews undoubtedly wondered what the future held for Israel and what would happen to God's promises. The book of Daniel encourages the remnant that God is sovereign over their future and destiny. Daniel's own lifestyle is an example of how the Lord wants his people to behave among the Gentiles until he brings his promises to pass. They never thought he would let it happen, I'm sure. I'm just sure of that. You know, he had brought them out of Egypt, right? Gave them the tabernacle, took them through all the years, gave them uh, the actual temple through after David, and uh, had David basically won them peace. Uh, well, some, some security, some military security from their enemies. And then God gave Solomon peace to build the temple. After doing all that, they were probably pretty convinced that, you know, God could do anything and would protect them. And so they had false prophets telling them, everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. And meanwhile, the true prophets were saying, God's about to judge this place. You better get right with God. And if you'll just follow what he says, you'll be okay. And it was an interesting and very applicable and relative to our day, um, what was happening to them, because God doesn't change. He doesn't change. All right. This one is, let me make sure I'm on track with my list. This is Henrietta C. Mears, What the Bible's All About. And uh, this was an old Bible college um, leftover textbook, and I love it. So she has like seven or eight pages here on Daniel. <clears throat> I'm just going to pick a couple things. I am going to read you the first three paragraphs because they are interesting. And I have two other little tidbits. <clears throat> but listen to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Children. Oh, first of all. Henrietta C. Mears in every book talks about who is Jesus in this particular book. And this one says, Daniel portrays Jesus Christ as the smiting stone. The smiting stone. Now, I'm not going to go into that. I just, I'm just noting it. It's interesting. Children, young men in whom was, I'm sorry, children, parentheses, young men, in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom. This is from Daniel 1. Skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them these are some of the men with whom this book deals they remember we're doing a who right so this is who you're dealing with you're dealing with daniel and his and his buddies or um, associates that were nobility they were skilled and they were put up into a high level of um 
high what high executive level in the Babylonian Empire. So it says they were skilled in God's wisdom as opposed to man's. They had an understanding of God's revelation, which unlocks the mysteries of human science. They had ability in them such as God gives to live the overcoming life. So the Babylonians didn't know who they had on their hands and who they were messing with because these guys had God with them and in them. So it says, chief among these princely young men was the incomparable Daniel. He stands in God's word as the man who dared to keep a clean heart and body, and the man therefore whom God chose as a channel for his message to the Gentile nations of the world. A large part of the book is concerned with the thrilling personal life of this peerless captive prince of Judah. Daniel was in the palace of Babylon the same time that Ezekiel was toiling in a slave gang if Daniel, because Ezekiel was put to speak to the exiles, so I think it was like a tent city type thing, and they lived there, probably not very nice, and um, and Ezekiel was sent there. He was, um, just as an aside, he was 25 years old and a priest when he was taken to exile. So he was taken over there with them, never got to serve as a priest, and um, at, went, on his 30th birthday, at 30 years old, if I've got it straight, okay, don't send the church police after me if I'm wrong. Don't call the heresy hunters. Um, but I think I got it right. So at um, 30 years old on his birthday, he was sitting by the K-Bar Canal when God gave him this amazing vision. Now, this is Ezekiel, the one we just read. Go back and listen to him. Um, he gave him this incredible vision and commissioned him to be a prophet to the exiles. So, so he was there, and Daniel was up in the upper echelon. So it says, <clears throat> excuse me. Daniel was in the palace while Ezekiel was toiling with the slave gang. If Daniel's was the easier life in many of its material aspects, it may also have been considered by far more perilous. Ezekiel's work during these dreary exile years was to proclaim to his people God's truth and explain the real meaning of the miseries that had befallen them. Daniel's task was to share in the actual government of Babylon. So each had their role given by God, not the Babylon, not Nebuchadnezzar. See? See, God was their God no matter what. No matter who naturally was ruling over them, God had them right where he wanted them. It's amazing. It's amazing, God's invisible kingdom. So it says, Daniel has been called the prophet of dreams. God revealed to him his secrets. Then was this, uh, this is Daniel 2, 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Daniel, like Ezekiel, looks for, far into the future. He is quoted most in Revelation. One cannot understand the great signs of revelation without looking at the meaning of in Daniel. So they're connected, those two books, Daniel and Revelation. And a couple more I'll tell you in a minute. Daniel belonged to a family of high rank. He was taken captivity to Babylon during the first invasion of Nebuchadnezzar at the age of 16. Now that's not what I read in the other one. So I'm not sure. That's the first time I've read that. 16. That doesn't jive with what I read. Darn. Well, anyway, um, anyway, I do know that um, there was 25 years from that first time when he was at the K-Bar Canal, and um, because it says it in the book of Ezekiel, it actually says this. He was sitting by the K-Bar Canal in the beginning, in, in book one, and then 25 years later, um, he gets another vision. Um, let me let me say this one more part. In the beginning, at the canal at the Kabar canal when he gets his first vision he sees the glory depart the temple 25 years later when he's uh, at the end of ezekiel he gets another vision and it's the glory coming back to that next temple so and that does give an exact time so 25 years he was there um at least 25 prophesying to those exiles and <clears throat> just doing god's work so it says um ezekiel was taken captive eight years later <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so that was Daniel that was 16. That's right. Ezekiel was older. Um, so Daniel was 16 when he was taken captive. Gosh. And then um, Ezekiel was 25, and he got his vision on his 30th birthday. Okay, you don't have to remember that, but if you listen to it enough, you'll start to pick it up. All right. Um, Daniel lived to be over 90 years of age. He saw the Babylonian kingdom fall and the Medo-Persian empire established. He held high positions under the kings Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Darius, and Cyrus. And some of those stories are in there. He had, when he was um, in the fiery furnace, if you're familiar with that story, it was Nebuchadnezzar. When you had the writing on the wall, um, Belshazzar. When he got thrown in with the lions, it was Darius. And also, I learned some time back, there was more than one Darius. There's more than one um, of a lot of these 
types of guys in scripture. And it's sometimes hard to look up the timelines of them because it's like, well, which one was it? Was it Darius one or Darius two, you know? So anyway, <clears throat> um, one more part from this book. Although Daniel was captive, he rose to be prime minister of Babylon. The wonderful thing is that he always remained true to God. So again, that was Henrietta C. Mears, what the Bible's all about. I love this book. The next one, got three more. This one is the complete Jewish Bible. And at the beginning of each of the books, there is, oh, I didn't put my marker or page. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm going back. This next one is Hayford's Bible Handbook. This is Jack Hayford. And he uses big words in this sometimes, but I don't think this one section that I'm going to read to you has that. And all I'm going to show you, um, the only thing good I found in this one about Daniel this time is that it gives just like an outline. And it has, um, number one, the religious convictions of Daniel. And this is the part where Daniel, like when they first got there, they said, no, nah, we're not eating your food. They, they requested a special diet. And these events happen that are really interesting surrounding that. And it has the, the exile in that part. The second part says Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The third part is um, deliverance from the fiery furnace. The fourth part is Nebuchadnezzar's second dream. The fifth part, Bel Belshazzar's blasphemous feast, which is when that writing on the wall and some other stuff. Um, the sixth part, Daniel in the lion's den. The seventh part, Daniel's first vision. The eighth part, Daniel's second vision. And then, is there a nine? Yeah, nine. Prophecy of the 70 weeks. And that's the part I really want to learn. I've never understood that. That's the part that talks about um, future, final, last days stuff. Um, and the tenth part is Daniel's final vision. So, <clears throat> um, I think that's all I wanted to show you from Dr. Hayford's. Um, book this time. Last time I found some other stuff, but that's good enough. And then, yeah, so it's now there's three more. This is Know Your Bible Illustrated by Paul Kent. I like this little book a lot too. It has, see, like a little, a little blurb on each, each book also. All right, so it says, um, The author and date, some of these, if they're dark, I can't read them very well. I guess I need some stronger readers. So it says, likely Daniel, though some question this. Um, oh, the author is likely Daniel, though some question it. Chapter 7 through 12 are written in the first person, I, Daniel. That's interesting. Though the first six chapters are in the third person. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Chapter 7 through 12 are first person, I, Daniel. The rest of it is um, third person, probably written during the period of the Babylonian captivity. So um, then it says, as a young man, Daniel, along with three others, to be known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is taken from his home in Jerusalem to serve the king of Babylon. Daniel's God-given ability to interpret dreams endears him to King Nebuchadnezzar, whose vision of a huge statue, there's that statue again, um, Daniel says, represents existing and future kingdoms. Let me see if there's anything else in here. Yeah. Okay, unique and unusual. The book was originally written in two languages, like I said, Hebrew, which is the introduction and most of the prophecies. So the other one didn't say that. And Aramaic. So the introduction, most of the prophecies were Hebrew. The rest was Aramaic. That's it for that one. All right, now this one. <clears throat> I first got saved way back in the early 1980s and he wrote well, let me show you these little just um, inserts for a three ring binder one on each book of the Bible and there's one on Daniel I love Dr. McGee and I appreciate him I don't agree with everything he said <clears throat> I don't think he believed in healing and certain you know uh, present day ministry of the Holy Spirit and he was wrong but um and I could be wrong about what he thought uh, all it takes is one experience with God to change your mind about that. Um, all right. A couple little blurbs in this, too, to bring out some more points. It says, The book of Daniel has been the battlefield between conservative and liberal scholars for years. Porphyry, uh, it's a, I guess it's an old, okay, a heretic in the 3rd century AD. I don't know if I said his name right. P-O-R-P-H-Y-R-Y. -R -Y. 
Porphyry, Porphyry a, her a heretic in the 3rd century AD, declared that the book of Daniel was a forgery written during the time of An Anicus, Epiphanes, and the Maccabees, which would have been 170 BC, almost 400 years after Daniel had lived. The German critics seized upon this hypothesis and along with Dr. S.R. Driver developed it. These critics, as well as present day unbelievers, assume the premise that the supernatural does not exist, hence there can be no foretelling since foreknowledge is supernatural. So I guess Dr. McGee did believe somewhat in the supernatural. However, the Septuagint, the Greek version of the Old Testament, written prior to the time of Anicus Epiphanes, contained the book of Daniel. So it existed before they said. Also, Josephus records an incident during the time of Alexander the Great, which supports the early authorship. When Alexander's, this is a great story, when Alexander's invasion reached the Near East, what is that name? Jedua, the high priest, went out to meet him and showed him a copy of the book of Daniel in which he was clearly mentioned. Alexander was so impressed by this in, that instead of destroying Jerusalem, he entered the city peacefully and worshipped in the temple. Isn't that cool? All right, so it says, when the writer, we know more of Daniel the man than we do of any of the other prophets. He gives us a personal account of his life from the time he was carried captive to Babylon in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, which is another thing. Several kings were taken into Babylon too, um, Jehoiakim being one of them. So that's interesting. We know more about him than any other prophet. And then it says, the three words that characterize Daniel's life, Daniel's life was purpose, prophecy, uh, prayer, and prophecy. I would love for that to be the things that define my life. Purpose, prayer, and prophecy. All right. And it says, um, oh, there's one more section in here. I think. Maybe not. He gives an outline too, but I don't really like his. That's it. Okay. This is the last one. This is called Your Bible and Your Bible, an easy to understand guide to God's Word. Um, and it's just another one of those little actually I think this one is a repeat of one of the other ones. Let me see if I marked anything. Hang on. Nope, I don't think I wanted to use this one. There was nothing new in it. <clears throat> so that's it for the, the Bible overview. I think we got a pretty good idea of it, don't you? We know who wrote it. And let's do the who, what, where, when. We know, let me look at my thing. We know who wrote it. We know a little bit about who's in it. Daniel and his, his cohorts, right? Um, Nebuchadnezzar um, and his kingdom. And, um, <clears throat> and we know Ezekiel was there somewhere, even though he's probably not mentioned. Not that I remember. But um, he was there at the time. Uh, let's see, um, contextual background, I gave you some of that. The time period and timeline, we kind of know that. Um, we know where it was, and um, <clears throat> we kind of know the purpose and the themes of the book. We talked a little about messianic references. So yeah, uh, we talked a little bit about what might be unique about it. So that was a pretty good overview, I think, and helps me feel a lot better prepared to get into this exciting book that we're going to read. But um, now let me just tell you about my free offer before I get off. Um, this is a one-year Bible that I offer for every single um, every single broadcast. I'm giving them away free for a donation of any size. Send a dollar. I just want to give them away. Um, um, I just repeat the same thing every time. Get your one-year Bible. These are so fun. I, I, I read the one-year Bible every year for probably over 30 years in all different translations. This is the New Living Translation, one of my favorite. And all you do is open it up to a date, read a few pages, and you're done. You'll have it read through at, at the end of the year. You'll actually have read more than the whole Bible because it has little extras. I think it I think it goes through Proverbs more than once, maybe, and some Psalms. But anyway, it has a little bit of Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs in each day. So a little old, little new. And, um, and it's a great gift. It's great to read with a friend. Um, it's great to read out loud. My husband and I have spent a lot of time reading this out loud to each other. Um, I highly recommend it. Somebody gave me one back in the early 80s. I mean, I, I think that was an NIV. I read the New American Standard, the Catholic version. Um, there's the chrono. I read the chronological. Um, this one, and I, I think there's more New King James. But um, you can get them on Audible. You can, you know, you can. The Audible one's not going to have the dates though. It doesn't. I, I didn't care for it. But anyway. 
there you have it. Get that for free. Um, the information's in the description, but you can email me at center or PayPal me center for worship at yahoo.com center for worship at yahoo.com $5 shipping. Um, I think it's about a nine by 12. It's a $25 retail approximately. Um, so get it and listen, make sure to look for the next, the first chapter of Daniel when it comes out for our read through. Um, and you know, and just get, get the videos and listen to them, listen to them when they're, you're driving, listen to them when you're relaxing, when you're working, working out. Um, the whole purpose of them is just to provide another venue to get the word in your heart, um, to encourage people to read their Bible and get in their Bible. The Bible is read in 70 hours average, which works out to 11 minutes a day if you want to read it in a year. So this is not a monumentous task as some people think, you know, I want to read my Bible. I should read my Bible feeling all condemned. Don't do that to yourself. Just, you know, once you get in it, like any habit, habits are addicting. And once you get in it, you'll be hooked. And, um, and so do that. I want you to, I want you to get in your word. I want you to get excited about the book of Daniel coming up. And I want you to get your, your free gift and get it to give to somebody else. It's free, right? I just want to get these Bibles out there because they're a great tool for getting people reading their Bible through all the way. So I think that's it for now. Um, again, look in the description for the email and feel free to comment, um, you know, thoughts, corrections, and questions, prayer requests. All right. Till next time. Thanks for joining.